Good evening, everybody. Storm Team here today with our second um, tropical update here on the Atlantic. Um, so, this is no longer Agatha. This is now in the Caribbean Sea. Um, this is in the northwest, northwest, northwestern Caribbean Sea. And it is going to be drifting off this way, making its way up here towards Florida. And you're going to see some impacts here on Cuba. Definitely already seeing some impacts here on the Yucatan Peninsula. We're going to see some in the Florida Keys and Florida, potentially even the Bahamas. And we we'll also have this other system right here that we are feeling impacts here in the Bahamas as well. Some heavy rainfall there with some disorganized showers and thunderstorms with that low pressure system over there. Now, this is going to be our main impact zone. This may impact southern Florida as a tropical storm. Now, it also may not. It might pass over and then become a tropical storm over here in this area. But we'll, we'll have to see. Now, um, this does have an 80% chance of formation in the next two days and an 80% in the next five days. And I will be expecting that to go up to 90% for the next five days, probably tomorrow. Maybe even within the next update. So let's read our discussion right here. So we have this service number one. This is Invest 91E. This is the second designated invest of the year. The last one we had was, whoopsies, the last one we had was right here. It was moving up this way. Um, so we're going to read our discussion here. Near the, as of 8 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time, Wednesday, June 1st, of 2022 near the Yucatan Peninsula and southern Gulf of Mexico, a broad area of low pressure located near the east coast of the Yucatan Peninsula is producing a large area of disorganized showers and thunderstorms over the northeast northwestern Caribbean Sea and the Yucatan Peninsula. Despite strong upper level winds and wind shear, gradual development is forecast and this system is likely to become a tropical depression while it moves slowly northeast toward over the northwest Caribbean Sea and northeastern Gulf of Mexico during the next day or two. Regardless of development, locally heavy rainfall is likely across portions of the Yucatan Peninsula during the next day or so, spreading across western Cuba, southern Florida, and the Florida Keys on Friday and Saturday. Interest in this system and the Yucatan Peninsula, western Cuba, and Florida Keys, and the Florida Panhandle Peninsula, not Panhandle, should monitor the progress of this system. Now, regardless of formation, this is going to produce very heavy rainfalls. Um, that is located right here. It's going to produce heavy rainfalls. It's already producing heavy rainfall here in the Yucatan Peninsula. And over here, it's going to produce heavy rainfall in Cuba and the Florida Keys and potentially even the Bahamas, as this is already producing heavy rainfalls over here in the Bahamas, too. We're going to take a look at our two graphics. Yeah, we can see the Bahamas is probably being impacted by some sort of rain. A shower thunderstorm development right there. Um, this doesn't look very likely to develop into much. Models aren't really picking up on it. But we'll still read the discussion for this. We're not going to focus on it as much. Um, as of 8 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time, Wednesday, June 1st, 2022, south, in the southwestern Atlantic, um, northeast of the Bahamas, a weak surface trough located about 150 miles northeast of the northwest Bahamas is producing disorganized showers and a few thunderstorms. While surface pressure has lowered somewhat over the past day or so, environmental conditions appear only marginally favorable for significant and significant development of this system appears unlikely as it moves generally east northeastward over the next several days away from the southeastern United States. It only has a 10% for five days and two days. I don't really think that's going to go up much. I don't even think it'll go up at all. Um, so yeah, this has moved into that area. This is designated as 91E. I'm going to go take a look at tropical tidbits. As we can see, this is designated tropical um, invest 91E. It has 35 mile per hour winds with a barometric pressure of 1,004 millibars. And those peak winds right now that are going on right now, those 35 mile per hour winds are going 
100 nautical miles out from the center of the storm, either this way or this way or this way or that way. Probably the northeast quadrant of the storm, which is always the strongest part of the storm in most storms. Now, as we can see here, model intensity guidance is a lot of these are taking us up to a tropical storm, as we see right here. Some of these are showing that this might actually impact Florida right here as a tropical storm, so we're going to have to monitor that. Um, here are the latest 91L model track guidance. Um, taking it here. Most of them generally have it coming from here, going through up here as we keep taking that track and going out here somewhere. Now, not all the models are on agreement with that. So, and these are not official, so do not use this map to make decisions, seek official info. Remember that. This is the GEFS track. Um, it shows it averaging out going through here. Um, so from the previous model runs, I have been seeing some interesting things developing with this, like impacting as a tropical storm in Florida right before landfall. And also having gusts as high as 90 miles per hour from other models, which is, wow. <laughs> but we have the new 18Z, so I haven't really looked at it that much, so we're going to be taking a look at it. I'm going to go to weathermodels.com. We're going to go take a look at it. We're going to look at the GFS first. Central America and the Gulf of Mexico. We're going to look at our wind gusts first. <laughs> Here it is right before landfall. We're talking about probably about 60, probably 50. 55, 60 mile per hour wind gusts right here as it's coming in shore. And it's coming out here. And it's out of view now. But it does look like it gets some really strong gusts up to probably about 66 miles per hour right here. As we see right here, max wind. And the barometric pressure right here is 996 millibars. That's some low pressure for a tropical storm. That's pretty impressive. Um. Now uh, that we've gotten that out of the way, we'll look at our actual 10 meter winds, which is what I use for close. It's closer to surface wind, so we can kind of use this as our surface wind. Right here, look at how strong this is. This is about 55 miles per hour right here. That is, it's pretty good looking. Let me just look it up quick. Yeah, that's 50 miles per hour right there. That is intense. For, for oh wow, forty-seven knots. Forty-seven. That's probably. I'm gonna estimate that's probably. So we can not upgrade this. Sit this will round this up to forty-eight knots. So forty-eight knots and miles per hour. You know what that is, guys? That is. Oh jeez, I. That is 55 miles per hour. So my estimate was pretty good. So that's 55 miles an hour right there. Model still does show it land falling as a tropical storm. I've been pretty consistent on that. Now it's out of range. It's pretty it's a pretty sweet looking storm right here. Wow. Um we're looking at the 10 meter winds, how about we go look at the IR satellite imagery? Oh, dang. Yeah, look at that. Look at that. Yeah, that's something. That's something right there. IR satellite imagery right there. Uh, we're going to go look at the ECMWF now. Whoa, whoa. Look, look at this ball of convection here. Just look at that. That is some intense convection right there. What is the ECMWF showing? It looks like it's landfalling up here. Somewhere up here along the central or the panhandle. <laughs> um, I'm going to look at our gusts. Okay. 
So right about there. So I want it strong. Dusty doesn't really show a weakening going over the Florida. What is ECMWF doing over Hurricane Ford's guts right there? It's 80 miles an hour right there for those gusts. Jeez. This is the model run I was talking about. 998 right there. 994, 993, 992. It's going all the way out there now. It's out of view. That's intense. That could be a hurricane out there. Now, this is the ECMWF, and it's going all the way out there into those colder waters, so I do not know if that is actually going to happen. I don't think it's going to become a hurricane, but who knows at this point. Models have been crazy. Okay, yeah, so landfall here, so not too far away from when GFS had it down here. That's probably like 100 miles off. Um... It still shows it landfalling as a tropical storm. So it looks like the ECMWF is also on board for Tropical Storm Alex making landfall in Florida. And up here we got that's probably about 50 mile per hour winds right there. Okay. Um ECMWF, you look at that. Let's look at that. What's the icon indicating? Icon. Icon, we gotta give you a chance too. What the fuck? Um, we're gonna have to look at a different. No, oh, 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 oh. I don't want to set up the time zone. Uh, I don't know. Uh, the models is in my specialty. <laughs> well. Got that. Um, but it does look like they're showing Tropical Storm Alex, so remember this can still change. But yeah, guys, thank you guys so much for watching. Um, if you would please smash that like button, turn on those post notifications, it would really help you to get all those notifications from whenever I post. And yeah, if you haven't yet, please make sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel. We're trying to get to 100 subscribers before the end of June. Thank you guys so much, and happy first day of hurricane season, and happy all-timers.